Hey, what's up? This is Dilio. I am an independent artist and music producer. Welcome to my channel, Dilio T2K. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the MPC Key 61. Uh, this is the keyboard version of the Akai series of these new series. What we got now? We got a lot of models out now from the recent release from the MPC Live, MPC Live 2. You got the MPC Live 1, uh, Live 2 Retro. You got the MPC 1, MPC 1 Retro. And you got the NBC Live 2. Then you got the NBC Live 2 Retro. And then I think there's like a gold one. And then there's like a Supreme one. Then you got the NBC X. And now the NBC X SE. But that's not about any of these. This is about the key station. <laughs> I call it a key station. NBC Key 61. This is my honest review of it. Uh, it's good. It's not perfect. We're going to talk about that in this video. So for me, the, the form factor is a much better fit for me than in the past because when I had the NBC One Retro, I would put it like right about here and I'm gonna put up a video of that. I will put it up right about here and I would have a MIDI controller under that. So that's two separate parts. And I had to get kind of like this laptop controller to hold the NBC One above me because the form factor that I like is that I like the, um, what I like most is it's cool to have like your controller to the side but when you have the controller in front of you, then boom, when you're playing whatever, you're, you're zoning, you're locked into what you're doing instead of trying to turn to the side. So I always like that form factor of having everything in front of me. If I can just reach out and touch it, that's great. So as a piano player, it, it's cool to have the controller by itself, but to have that main sequencer you like to use and an actual keyboard built in together helps streamline your form factor. I actually can see the screen a little bit better than what I could before because the MPC-1 was actually up higher, right? The MPC-1 was up higher and therefore um, a little harder to see. I could still work, but it was just a little bit less ergonomic. I already have kind of like a high chair and just positioning things where you can reach is, is, a, is a good thing, you know? And then on top of that, the key bed is actually a good quality key bed. Like I played on it before and I was like, oh, okay. But now I'm able to sit down with it and take my time with it without like a time crunch. Um, I can really get to know the key beds and, and, and it feels good. Um, this, there's a good touch to it. it. And I was a little worried about that, uh, hearing about it because of my previous experience with Akai MIDI controllers. They are not the best quality. They have been sort of kind of on the plastic side. They work, they function. So if you're just trying to make music, it's great. But as far as like that, that same key bed experience that you would get from a more expensive workstation, like a, a you know a Korg series, a Yamaha Roland, Roland series, their key beds are always a lot more higher quality, and they and I feel like they match that with these key bed with these keys right here. So that's cool. Um, you got all the features of a full fledged MPC. Um, Actually, you have full-fledged XLR inputs on the back. So if you want to sample something in standalone mode, you could. And that's what I like about these is that my primary use is to do this with a computer. So this is uh, an expensive controller. But if I wanted to take this and go and gig, I could. And it does come with some, it does come with a good sounds because of the premium plugins that come with this. And so if you want to layer some keys and some brads, it's good. But I feel like where it kind of gets a little lax is like, say, like the DX sounds. Um, the road sound is good, but like on the DX side, not so strong. Strings are good. Brass is good. But it's like those those weird niche sounds that you normally get. That's like at the back of the preset list of the workstation. You're not really going to get here. Uh, you could sample it from a workstation and then bring it in there too if you want to go through that trouble and there's tons of uh expansions out there that allow you to do that especially the daily 808 expansion pack shameless plug there is all kinds of features here there's the, the there's are some things i don't like so when you're dealing with the keys 61 there's a different button layout right so the muscle memory i had is that there's a lot of functions here and there's actually some buttons that are on my MC one that are not here that I have to kind of learn to double tap to see if I can get to them better. But the double tap does act like a shift function when I'm trying to get to the mix. If I'm trying to mix a pad, I can, I can mix that or go back and then the main button is here. Whereas on the MPC one, the mains over here, now it's over here. 
Uh, I do like the introduction of the touch strip. I remember this format from the MPC One Studio. And what I like that about that is that I can assign that to a function. So all I, I do is just hit the touch strip and it's gonna show me what, what it's set to. And it stays there no matter what you do, it will stay right there. So I, I do like that. Um, and that is that is a fun that is a fun thing there to do there. You got your it's just interesting because there are two shift buttons on here. You got a shift button over here, and then you have another shift button over here. And so in using this and getting to know this you have to learn a new muscle memory for how to do that. But I do like the navigation over here. I do like that touch strip. One of the main things I like to do is to mix my sounds on the fly. So before on the MPC one, I had to hit the pad and then either go to pad mix or go to the pad and select it here and then do it mixing here. Now I can just tap my pad and adjust the volume here without bothering with the Q link knobs. I don't get the full 16 Q link knobs like the MPC X but I still enjoy for trimming my samples. So they do come in handy. And the fact that they're multi-function knobs adds to the flexibility of that. So on the side, I think, I think if I could just say where it really falls short at is that I think just the button layout is a little confusing and I'm still learning, but some of it's obvious, but just like that muscle memory that you have from one, sometimes doesn't always translate to the other model, like from the NPC Live to the npc one and then to the x all the functions are there but sometimes they're laid out different and so that makes you have to kind of rely more on muscle memory sounds are okay key bed is really good the pitch bend modulation wheel is good and i think it's really cool to bring to a gig it's fun it's a good form factor especially if you play like if you don't really play too much you just play a little bit of melodies here and there the key, having a keyboard in front of you may not be as important, and that's not a bad thing. It's just a different style of production where you rely on different methods because you can definitely play your notes here on the pads. And let's talk about these pads. I wanted like it to have the full size pads, but these are the same size pads as the MPC one. I learned to live with that. It's okay. I wanted the full size pads. You do get the full size pads on the MPC Live, on the X, but you do not get them on the one and on the key 61 which is interesting because if you go to the embassy studio which is a solely a controller you get the full size pads very interesting and so for comparison i think that this is a, a a pretty pretty fun board i mean i know i'm partial to it because i know the sequencer which at the heart of it is the most important thing to me because without that sequencer and being able to access all these different pieces of hardware and stuff right there in front of me and just having that screen right there in front of me and a much better viewing angle, it was higher, so I couldn't see it. So having a much better viewing angle is really fun. And, uh, you know, I'm still getting to know it and we're going to see what happens with this. But I actually like this better than my one for the sole fact of the form factor. I don't have to have a, a MPC one and a keyboard controller. I could just have it all in one place. I could still have my small synthesizers up here. Uh, should I ever end up getting, you know, and I do want to get some, <laughs> you know, and, and there's room to put what I want to use right here. Having that in arm's reach is really good. Gives you that command center feel. And I think this is the fun, interesting board. Um, definitely a winner. Like if, if you like really are a serious piano player and you work with the MPC, universe or are you considering that i would strongly consider this over all of them uh so that you can still have a convenient way to express yourself with the keys and the pads like and, and I, I get used to that i can work it i don't let it stop me i'm not gonna let its limitations stop me everything has limitations even this my mindset is don't let the work around your limitations and create and you know blow everybody's mind with that so yeah definitely a different form factor I enjoy it, and uh, I want to know what you guys think about it. Uh, what MPC do you use? If, are you an MPC user? What MPC do you use? Do you like any of those? I already listed them all. <laughs> Which ones do you like and why? You know, let me know in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. And uh, what would you like to see improved in the next version of it? You know, this is, they're probably going to stay with this for a while, but I, I think that they will probably 
work on the software which i i definitely think that should work on get some more features up in here so let me know what you think i'm dilio you watch the dilio ttk youtube channel make sure you download my free pack dilly 808 which is the sponsor of this video there's like almost only 100 copies left i'm only giving away 200 copies uh it's a nice dilly 808 kit with some drum loops about 30 about 30 drum loops in there i program that you can drag it to your tracks and samples that sample off the re8 meticulously they're great clean samples let me know what you guys think i'll see you in the next video i'm out dilio t2k